Every week, Unitarian Universalists gather in congregations, and most of them say one of these variations of a covenant. They say, love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. And some of them end with these words, thus do we covenant with each other and with God. And some of them end with these words, this is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Today we're talking about two words for love that could be the love that is the doctrine of this church. One of them is agape, the Greek word for the love of and for God. And one of them is caritas, the Latin word for beloved community. And those two words for me, though they're from two different cultures, the Greek and the Latin and the Roman, they really mean the same thing to me. Now to other people that I know, that's not true. Other people that I know really experience God separately from community. And I'm not saying that I never experience a very large sense of the love that is possible. But every time I've experienced it, it has involved beloved community. I remember years ago, right when I was starting my spiritual journey, I was in a political group that was that had fallen into splinters. We were fighting. And for those of us who do this kind of work, we know sadly, well, do any kind of community work. Work in, whether it's spiritual communities, political communities, learning communities, there are always differences. And in this case, the group fell into such splintering that it was really hard. And so a big march that was gonna be held the group just decided, forget it, we're not even going to do it, we quit. We're, they were so mad at each other. And so some of us who had been part of this group but had left and gone on, came back to meet with the folks who'd just given up the ghost on this march. We were sitting there and we were just listening, some of us who came back, listening to the arguing and who did what and who didn't do what and who said what and who was oppressive and who wasn't oppressive and it was just going on and on. And finally, this Quaker woman, who was really central in the group that I was in, though she had moved on, said with just sorrow, she said, this breaks my heart. This isn't how we started. How did we get here? I don't know what I did wrong. I think maybe I, I left too soon without helping the new leaders, and I'm really sorry about that. But this spirit that's here, it's just not what this group is for. Now, I'm paraphrasing it 20 years later. What I can tell you is when she said that, the energy in the room completely changed. Everyone who'd been fighting got deeply sad. And people started to say, yeah, I came to this group because I heard it was great and it's just been awful and hasn't been right. And Soon there was this love that came into the room where there had been brokenness. This love came into this room, this love that made me think of the word revolution. When you think of revolution, making the world go around, that's how big that love felt at that moment. And it wasn't a spiritual community and nobody was talking about God, but that's, it felt to me in that moment that it was a holy moment because what was broken became whole again. That's what I think of when I think of agape or caritas. It's a big love, a love, as they say, that will not let you go no matter what, no matter what mistake you make, no matter how broken the relationship is, there's this love that's still present. I had a broken relationship with somebody, probably the worst one of my life, that went on for 10 years. It was a romantic relationship that ended very badly, and we did not speak for 10 years. And 
It was a very hurtful breakup. 10 years later, when we met again, there had been healing. And what amazed me was that the love, which had felt so gone in all of that destruction, the rubble that was there after we broke up, somehow underneath that, when we moved it aside, the love was still there, it was still whole, it was still present. There was a lot of negotiating to do, there was a lot of distrust that needed to be worked through, but the love was still there. And I've seen that over and over, that underneath the rage, underneath the grief, underneath so many kinds of pain that we carry, that love is still there. You know, the words of the spiritual, there is more love somewhere. I'm going to keep on till I find it. There's more love somewhere. And whether we're affirming that in a place that is absolutely loveless and we don't even believe it, or whether we're, as so often you use, want to change the lyrics, let's say there's more love right here. No, let's not. Let's honor the truth of that song, that it's been sung by people who are in abject loneliness, pain, and brokenness, and still find the spirit to affirm there is more love somewhere. I'm going to keep on till I find it. That's the little bit of agape that we walk with. Each of us is born into love, however terrible the situation into which we came, it also included love or we would not be here today. No matter how bad your beginning story is, and I've heard some very broken ones from this community and other people that I know, no matter how much pain there was, there was still love or you would not be here today. And so let's keep on until we find it, whether we call it God, or whether we call it the love for each other, let's keep on digging, drilling, looking up, looking down, looking around, looking everywhere until we find more love.